This video is about thermal expansion. If you're ever driving across a bridge, you'll hear the click of the road as you drive over it. Uh, that click is due to the expansion joints that are in that bridge. Uh, the concrete must be allowed to expand when it gets hot. It must be allowed to contract when it gets cold. Otherwise, the bridge will break and come down, and obviously that's not going to happen. So when you have thermal expansion due to heating, there's a couple of ways in which there's actually three ways in which that takes place. The first way is you have linear expansion. And this is obviously if, if you have a certain length of a, of a piece of metal and you heat it, it gets longer because of that expansion. The second way is area expansion. So for example, the, the roof on a house, if, if, you, if you heat that, it's going to expand in, in, in multiple directions based on the area. And then the last way is obviously the volume expansion, in which liquid will expand in three dimensions. The formulas that go with this the first one is I'm going to go with my change in length. Uh, if, if I have a change in length, so that's the change that is due to the heating of the object, and I'm going to multiply that times my original length times a coefficient of linear expansion. So I'm going to put that over here. My alpha is my coefficient of linear expansion. Every material of linear expansion expansion. Every material has a certain ability to expand. Some materials expand more than others. Some materials obviously expand less than others. So this coefficient is just a number that we, it's a mathematical equation that we get based on the material that's present. And then, then you have your change in temperature that goes with that. We're going to do some problems with this in class, so bring these formulas with you. Area expansion, because area is just two length, it's just the side times side, we have our change in area is equal to two times the area, the original area, times it is still a linear expansion, times my change in temperature. The volume, because it expands three ways, we have our change in volume is equal to our original volume, and then we have, instead of alpha, we have beta. And it's just, once again, it's a value. So, for example, the, the coefficient of linear ex expansion for aluminum, just to give you an example of a number, the coefficient of linear expansion for aluminum is 24 times 10 to the negative 6 degrees, and this is an inverse of Celsius, so this is the exact same as 1 over degrees Celsius. It's in the unit, all you need is the number. So that would be an example of the coefficient of expansion for aluminum. So when you see, if, if this were an expansion of aluminum, you would put this number here. Part two of this video deals with latent heat. Uh, the word latent, we can simply say that means hidden heat. And what we use this for is, let, let's say, let's, let's put an ice cube in here. And this ice cube is, let's, let's give it a temperature of, uh, and, well, let's just call it zero degrees Celsius. Uh, so we, we have the solid form of water, and we're going to change it to water. So we're, we're going to change this to the liquid form of water. Well, at what temperature does water freeze, and at what temperature does ice melt? Well, that's at zero degrees. So how can that be the same number? Uh, how can something be zero degrees and it can melt, or be zero degrees and it can freeze? The answer is, it's not just solely based on temperature. It is based upon the amount of heat. And in this case, if I'm going to go from a solid 
to a liquid. If I want to go from a solid to a liquid, so from, from ice to water, then what I have to do is add heat. I have to add heat. That will raise the temperature eventually, but this is going to melt at zero degrees Celsius. And so that heat that we add is called latent heat. And in this case, it is called heat of fusion, or our melting heat. And it has a value. It has a value. So we're going to put H of F and that value to melt water, let's say, is 3.35 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. So if, if I have a kilogram and I want to melt it, I need to apply this much heat in order for that to take place. So the formula is very simple. The, the amount of heat needed for my heat of fusion is the amount of mass times my heat of fusion. The second part of latent heat is going to be if I want to go from a liquid to a gas. So in, in this case I've got water molecules and they're in liquid form and I want to take it into where they're all spread out and they become a vapor. So I will go from, from liquid to or from water to a vapor. This is called heat of vaporization. And that number, my heat of vaporization, is 2.26 times 10 to the 6th joules per kilogram. That's quite a bit more. It's quite a, you have to add quite a bit more heat to change it from a liquid to a gas. Remember that water is going to do this at 100 degrees Celsius. So once it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, the amount of heat, this amount of heat present in order for it to start boiling and convert it into a gas. The same is true if I'm going to go from a gas to a liquid. If I'm going to go from a gas to a liquid, so from water vapor to water, I've got to remove this much heat in order for it to make that phase change. My formula for this, once again, is very simple. The amount of heat needed to change phases is going to be the mass times my heat of vaporization. So however much mass you have, you use this number. And that goes back to this. If, if, we, if we're going to convert this back from, well, let me put my water molecules in here. If I'm going to go from water back to a, a solid, I've got to remove this much heat per kilogram in order for that to take place.